when we're talking about dynamic warm-up, and I'll tell you, if, if I had only one unit of training to implement with athletes, a spectral group of athletes, even the, just football players, I would probably do dynamic warm-up activities, in particular with younger kids. And I would want to do it about five to 10 minutes every day. It's kind of like special teams. You guys need to be able to not, you don't wait until Thursday to implement a, your special teams. If you do, you're going to get a double thump on Friday night, you're going to lose football game. You guys probably practice it every day, 5, 10, 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes a day. Think of a dynamic warm-up protocol as something you do with your people every single day. Um, Kids in 2016 are no longer riding bicycles and skateboarding and playing wiffle ball until you know 10 o'clock at night. That you know we, we, we kids are coming to you that have a chronological age of 14 and a training age of eight. One of the ways that you can overcome some of those issues that you don't have any control over, if you get them when they're 14, hopefully you don't. Maybe you're working with your junior high or your youth program so they are starting with you when they're six and eight years old. One of the best ways to develop their ability is with these 10 exercises that I'm gonna share with you here in a few minutes. They go from simple to complex. An orangutan can, can do some of these exercises the first time you demonstrate it. Some of the other ones, guys, I mean, it could take weeks months, even years, to develop enough skill in some of these more complex movements. But again, it's a process, not a product. You know, we, when, when I first started my business in 2002, we had a training facility, and you're gonna see the little studio facility we started with. And one of the limit, my original vision was to have a place that was about 200 feet long so I could do 40 yard dashes and time my clients. Well, we just couldn't afford that, that square footage. So we had this facility that was about 70 by 40. What we found is that in this distance that we had, we had to focus in on that product, that process, not the product. We didn't time the 40 yard dash because we couldn't run 40 yards. So we started working on these 10, 10 meter, 10 yard increments and it made a huge difference in the technical skill of these athletes. Another thing I'm gonna to introduce to you is the concept of trigger terms. Uh, using either single word or, or couple of word phrases to cue the athlete in to doing what they're, what they're supposed to do. Let's take a look at the five trigger terms that I'm gonna use on all five, 10 of these dynamic warm-up exercises. The first one I'm gonna say is something in, re, re, in relation to their upright body position. You wanna be upright. Number two, you wanna focus. I um, took this information from a guy back in the 80s in Southern California named Kevin McNair who was a really excellent sprint coach. And he used these trigger terms to coach guys proactively while they were running. The third one is called rotate. We're gonna rotate from the shoulder, and you're gonna see this in the first hour, and I'm gonna amplify on this one in particular in the second hour when we talk about speed and agility drills. The fourth one's in red. Hey, this isn't Sunday, but we're going to do a little witness here. I want you to raise your hand, everybody in the room that's used the word, the phrase, high knees in their, their coaching career. Raise your hand, come on. All right. We want to change that, guys. If I'm a 14-year-old or an 8-year-old and you tell me to have a high knee position, I'm going to heel strike. I'm going to talk about that in the second hour. I will heel strike because I'm going to be doing a drum major drill, a technique that a drum major would do. And by virtue of that phraseology that we use, they heel strike. And if you heel strike, you run slow. So what you're doing is, by, by using the term high knees, you're reinforcing slowness. What you want to say is high foot. And we'll talk about that for about 10 minutes in the second hour with a, with a drill that I teach called a box drill, which all of you probably do. But it's like, wow, I never thought about that. I want to pull my heel to my butt. I do not want to concentrate on my knee. And that's what we're going to talk about in hour two. 
And the fifth one is you always want to be in the ball of your foot. So these five things are what I use as trigger terms constantly when I'm teaching warm up and technique. Upright body position, focus, rotate, high foot, ball of the foot. It's a five point sequence and you're gonna see that uh, thematically over the next three hours as well. Everything to me is on a five point scale. You wanna be a five. Use this terminology. And I, I, I took this from, I had a young coach ask me about a half an hour ago, you know, who are the guys that were influential in my career? And I said, well, since 1980, there's been about 30 people. And this guy was an educational psychologist. His name is Fred Jones. He's taught a beautiful, he's got a beautiful textbook it's called Positive Classroom Instruction. It really has application to, you know, math and science, but it has excellent application to the coaching field as well. Tell them what they're doing right. Tell them what to do next. I'm telling you, many of us, you're, you are evolutionarily hardwired to recognize error. If you didn't, we wouldn't have evolved over the last 2.5 million years. You in, institute the fight flight mechanism when you see something negative. You gotta be able to fight that as a coach. Take a deep breath, tell them what they did right, tell them what to do next. Think about those five trigger terms, okay? Your focal point was excellent. Next time, rotate from the shoulder. I told him what he did right, I'm gonna tell him what he needs to work on. Think about that when you're instructing people and they'll, they'll evolve very rapidly. And you won't be telling them what they're doing wrong. They don't need to know what they're doing wrong. They need to know what to, to do right, and then, then they need to know what to do next. 